Hello everybody, welcome to part 4 of the Dengist Spear playthrough and in this part we will be fixing our biggest issue that we have right now in 1970 which is the oil crisis. Now as, in, as you can see, things are not good at all. Not only that, uh, basically the entire economy of the Zolveren or the Einheitspark is collapsing. So we've also got uh, a rebellious uh, social status which means people around uh, Europe is very mad at us for not handling handling the situation better and we've got a whole new focus tree that we need to complete to fix this problem and we will be going down the centrist route as many of you probably have predicted by now but without further ado let's start with Achilles heel struck the heart bleeds. The oil crisis is wreaking havoc on Germany. Take to the streets. Now they were on the streets. All he could see in every direction were men just like him. A sea of people informed that their services were no longer required. The streets before the corner rattles was flooded with light, illuminating the rolling mass of people demanding their government to do something, anything to elevate their woes. They were being beaten and bloodied for the sin for wanting food to eat, a roof to sleep under, and a government that cared. No more. Our social tension has decreased, but at least we can now declare martial law, and this will improve social tension significantly, but also uh, help the conservative cause significantly. So we're gonna hold on to that. We're not gonna do that just yet. We can now do the West Covers and the East Screams. And doing the focus, the heart bleeds has uh, allowed us to do two other folk uh, of decisions, sorry, which will and uh, this will again increase the conservative cause in the Reich, but will improve social tension tension moderately. And after it has been removed, the rate of which social tension increases every two weeks increases, which isn't that good. Social tension improves moderate. Yes, that's. Let's do that. Distribute propaganda. Black, red, and gold. Are we live? Good, good. He returned his gaze to the camera and grinned, shuffling his notes. People of Germany, things are bad. I don't have to tell you that. Everyone's out of work or losing their job. The Reichsmark buys a penny's worth. There are riots in the streets and we sit watching our TVs while some news newcasters tell us that today the ORPO killed 15 people in the name of peace, like that's the way it's supposed to be. This government doesn't give a shit about you, it only cares about enriching itself or funneling money to those corrupt bastards at IG Farben. I want you to go out into the streets, cause things aren't going to change until you get mad. I want you to go out there and shout I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I am mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Social tension worsens moderately. God damn it! These decisions will increase the rate of the rate of social tension uh, that increases every two weeks. So I don't know what to do. Like I'm still gonna hold uh, hold on before I do any of them. The Western sovereign is struck by the oil crisis. Mother Russia bleeds. Scorner surveyed the map of Moscow before him. The protest that the fuel in his weakness has allowed to take to overtake Germany proper had since spread far to the east. Time to demonstrate the failure of Speer's methods. Uh oh, that doesn't look good. The Eastern Sovereign is struck by the oil crisis. Was saying most, the emergency meeting has commenced. Ding, 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 ding. Fight terror with terror. Pushing away the plate in revulsion, he resumed listening to the constant briefing that was coming from Kaiser's mouth. Four such attacks on the local party headquarters have occurred in the last 24 hours, though only one was successful. The others were driven off either by security or party members forming into local militia, who have engaged in violent bouts with the rioters. Albert slammed his fists against the desk and barked a brief yell out of impotent rage. Is there nothing that can be done about these savages? The best response we have is some grey-haired veterans who, have, who haven't seen combat since the West Russian War, beating up communists in the streets like it's the 1920s, while we squabble backstage trying to fix things. We've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. What to do? What to do? 
Nobody in the gathering room wanted to be there, not Earhart staring in the mirror at his own mistakes, not Kaiser expecting another massive headache with how angry the hardliners must have felt, not Trexkel who had half mind to stick well, his foot through the door in retaliation against political dissidents in the Wehrmacht signing up again, not Schmidt who felt his role of Minister of Foreign Affairs has now reduced as a joke while the world scrambled in fear around him. Not and not least the visionary architect Speer, the bedrock of his operation as Führer now shaky. The main issue we should remain concerned about is Germany and the Einheitspakt, everything else is secondary. A decline in influence worldwide, Erhard grumbled. If it makes you feel any better, Erhard, Trexco began, this affects both the US and Japan. I've been told by the R&D that Japan will be hit especially hard by this. So we won't suffer so much as they will. Oh, but we'll suffer, alright, Schmidt hunched over a number of papers. This is a mess, he muttered. No, Herr Schmidt, I don't think so, Schmidt spoke, alerting Schmidt to his presence, who gazed at him with curiosity and the constant aura of subtle irritation. We need only to do one thing at a time like this. Start brainstorming, men. We have a right to save. So much to do, so little time. Two sides stood opposed to one another as they all convened to two topics, the economy and the, rep and the repatriation of the slaves. Speer and Erhard did not mince their words nor did they try to hide the fact that Germany's economy was beginning to suffocate rapidly at the hands of the crisis, though Erhard bit his tongue and hid his regrets as he discussed the measures of austerity and most importantly the temporary seizing of the rep repatriation, while Trexkel stood divided, Kaisinger and Smith made their stances clear. You will cause a revolt by doing that, Schmidt shot a gl glare towards Erhard. And we would cause a revolt with our citizens if our economy crashed because we prioritized the slaves over our own. Schmidt felt himself stop when he heard Speer spoke those words. At the very least, I must suggest we don't lock down the budget. We cannot let the economy stall by halting our actions. I would offer increasing expenditures, Kaisinger said. Erhard spoke. Perhaps we can keep the economy open for now, but when it comes to repatriation, not all men can be as idealistic as you, Schmidt. A bit of sweet victory. Then what is it, Erhard? We let even more of the former slaves live in squalor, giving them all the reason they need to hang us up with the rope we've sold to them? I'm aware. But, and this may be a dangerous assumption to make, they know they'll need Germany in the order in order to fully recover. For the second time now, Schmidt found himself uncertain as to what to say. When Speer spoke next, Schmidt shot him a glare that seemed almost visceral in its reaction. The matter is resolved. The repatriation will be stopped. The repatriation of the slaves will be halted indefinitely. And we will complete Musain. And the wheel turn mission will activate. Now we've got 200 days to solve things. The wheel turns. The present is nothing but the egg from which the future shall hatch, no matter what it may be. They may not like the fact that we've stopped the repatriation, but at the very least we can try to show the Einheitspark, or more accurately speaking, the Zolverin isn't just to ravage Eastern Europe and exploit it to its fullest extent. No, her or hard. That's just going to back to a circular argument. Germany comes first. Anything else will only lead to outrage and stability in our home territory and the east is already unhappy we don't need to anger we don't need the anger to spread here too after all we are the architects of europe future and every good plan starts with a criti and every good plan starts with criticism he could feel schmidt's burning gaze even if he couldn't see it at that moment instead we can reach out to the rest of the world and craft a more humane image of germany then again he had one more. was that even necessary there was always the option of going towards the party which would almost certainly launch a massive propaganda campaign just as they always would. As far as he knew, it worked during the time like this. Since we are going down the centrist route and the dangerous spear path, we will be doing the fewer knows best and this will automatically complete the fewest will focus for us. And now we get, we get access to this whole branch of the focus tree. And we will do to the people and to the party. I've asked some of the folks in the TNO Discord and they said that uh, I can safely ignore this. So I'm just gonna not do this. <laughs> Spiel quickly shook the allegory from his head and began to speak. People of Germany, we stand together in a time of crisis. Unity, brotherhood, loyalty. Mainly talk about those things. It's best not to reaffirm the ideas that everything has gone to shit. We must be reunited. We are Aryans, all children of the fatherland, after all. Trust in your fuel. I will guide you all to victory. Remain calm and steadfast. It is the Aryan way. 
they were listening, their attention absolute. It was hard for Shpin not to smirk. It was all going according to his design. We will overcome the crisis, as we will have overcome all before. Remember the victories of the Second Route Creek, the West Russian War, and the Burger Creek. Are you just going to let those who died go to waste because you succumbed to capitalist and degeneracy? Above all, we must never forget the true enemy is the Jew. This hijack broadcast is conducted by the Reichsbanner Swartwart Gold. We hear your cries for justice. Your families have been torn apart from their homelands, and their only chance at return has been ripped from them by, at the, by the Reich's efforts to maintain its tyrannical regime. The revolution is coming. I think I'll stay home from work today. Everyone, from the likes of Theodor Oberlander and his clique, to Speer's loyal followers and the gang themselves and the silver support they had within the NSDP, listened to his words. Now is the time among all others to test our vision, Speer began. There are a thousand dissident voices in the Volkshalle, but all of you have forgotten that Germany must be led by one. Who of you considers yourself the will of the people? To those who would dare, I say it is a shameful thought to have, to even consider. While the crisis of which have, have hit upon continues to shake the root of the, the world around us, Germany must stand firm, no matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice. And here, I will demand such a sacrifice from you all. We must stop this chaos, and we must stop it now. And we get 20 more days to the Will Turns mission. With the focus fewer last completed, we now have decisions to do more stuff regarding our economy. We now have three focuses that allows us to go out into the world and ask for oil. We will do Panacea in the west, Ambrosia of the north, and Epion in the east. Though this one will be a bit strange. Now that's not good. Thanks Glenn, I appreciate it. I think that investment in Norway was worth it. Hey, we can now implement economic reforms and this will uh, improve the effects of the oil crisis at the cost of social tension. Oh, and our GDP growth is now at a 2.10%. Um, thanks Kishi, I guess. We can do economic reforms again, so why not? Let's do it. Our GDP growth is back at 4.10%. A united future. The Zolvern members are made to increase their budget contributions by 10% in solidarity to the Reich, which in, ret in turn increases its own contributions by 5%. Hmm, that doesn't seem so good for all of the members of the Zolvern. Now we can do the modern Asclepius. The Fuhrer shall heal the Reich, and we get 20 more days to the he to the wheel turn mission. Finally, we can complete our oil crisis tree by doing the focus Volksch Architect. The Reich is the Fuhrer's greatest work. Well, it looks like you two are dead because apparently you can't breach anyone's front. What are you do? What are you? I'm so confused. What is? I I don't know what the AI is doing. Like in my Harrington playthrough in the USA, we can intervene in the Iranian civil war. We must secure our foreign oil reserves. Speer reread the report for the tenth time. He knew what had happened. He had blundered. He had fucked up badly and was paying the price for it. He knew what was missing from the fuel last now. It was a plan B. He didn't have a plan B for it if the propaganda failed. Maybe one or two were convinced, but the rest, they were revolting. Hitler's dreams can't just die. It must be preserved by any means necessary, and we... Well, that sucks. We're gonna run out of time. Gerhard now enjoys the fruits of his labors in his office. The unmarked cassette were, was playing into a pair of headphones. The fact that his that this tape existed at all was damning enough, but the contents disturbing disturbed him greatly. The recording was, a f was of a phone conversation at one of Galen's crackling voice, the other the unmistakable tone of the Fugger Albert Spiel. He listened to it to its completion, then removed the film from the tape, concealing it with an empty bottle of pills. Galen was a true rogue agent. At the head of one of the world's largest intelligence agencies, Galen Reinhardt was smart and revealed much of much while demanding nothing. Nonetheless, Gerhard could recognize the hint of extortion. Truly, nobody was without sin. Gerhard knew the many 
see darker secrets of the Reich, but could only hypothesize whether Speer had been party to them. If Galen reveals any what he had found, the Reich would collapse on itself. Wesel pulled a, his pen knife from the pocket all too slowly as the man's left hand emerged from his coat holding a slim pistol. In one smooth motion, the man's arm straightened and ended. the oversized suppressor brushing against Wesel's ears as he jerked to the side. With a gurgle, the man in the sunglasses expired. Hermeyer hit see Rex Kanzler Kaisinger, the squabbles of children. The Reichstag was, was silent as the man who held the reins of state argued. Oberlander was in rare form, his face as red as he had ever been. Your system of make-believe economics has utterly collapsed, he hissed at Erhard and Spiel. I warn you of this. I warn you of the risk of, of tying our economy to what capitalists and democrats owe the world over though prudent, but you did not listen. The door to the Volkshalla began to shake, almost as if hinges, the, and the guards quickly moved to hold it shut. The students, the rioters, were trying to bust through them into the chambers of the government. Kaisinger tried to step forward to suit the situation, but Erhard spoke first. I am not the one who blew up the Middle East. If anyone is to blame, it is our fuel and Hitler for mismanaging the economy so severely that, that such drastic measures were necessary. How dare you blame me for the catalyst of your, of your own mistakes, you, your own idiocy. Speer had abandoned all of his confessor. The fuel was as angry and tense as anyone else in the room. Keep the fuel's name out of your mouth, he commanded. This is no failure of the government, this is the failure of the Reichs-led economists, and they see fit to sit in this room criticizing my implementation of their own policies. As the tension escalated, no one in the chamber noticed when the door finally gave. With a holler, the rioters rushed in, beginning to flip the desk all over and throw papers to the floor. A few of the bolder pro protesters grabbed members of parliament, trying to beat them bloody and raw to the avenge the common peoples of Germany. The fuel safe above this manners gave the order to the scrambling guards. Clear them out. And I'm guessing this is the incident that never happened. Yep, the incident that never happened in TNO. As the last rioter fled to escape the storm of bullets, the whole of the Reich's government was silent. Speer plustered with a sweat peered down at the carnage below, the massacre that he had unleashed. He looked over his shoulders to Kaisinger and Oberlander, whom expected to voice support. Both were silent, however. Speer noticed that those men whose job it was to televise the Reichstag sessions were quietly packaging their equipment. Stop, he commanded. The German people must see that this is necessary. I have tried my best to help, to save the people of Germany. Now for all my laborious efforts, I see that I could have done more. I should have done more. I am truly, truly sorry. Speer looked more panicked than remorseful, but seemed genuine. I have only ever wanted the best for the Reich and its people. Please, I urge you, trust in me, as you have always done before, and I will lead to the Reich to sell. A scream cut out through the air. If this is your view of the best of Germany, then you are a madman. Schmidt looked inside, incensed. He strode into the center of the chamber, surrounded all, on all sides by blood and atrocity. What have you done, Speer? He glanced around the room, gesturing at the children who had given their lives to mildly inconvenience them, their politicians. How are the people to trust you when you shoot them down in the streets? People will trust me because I am the fewer. Speer, Speer shrieked, his face flushed with embarrassment and anger. How dare Schmidt do this? In front of the Reichstag and all of Germany. Herr Schmidt, return to your seat. Herr Schmidt, I have not given you permission to speak. This was treason. Schmidt was betraying him. Speer glanced around fearfully. Has this, had this been planned? Who else was involved? Helmut, please sit down. Schmidt remained where he was. The Reich is dying. I've had enough of this. Herr Schmidt. Speer's voice shot back almost immediately, and once again the NSDP lapsed into pitiful silence. I would advise you to cease this unprofessionalism at once. I unprofessionalism? Rage clouded Schmidt's thoughts. At a time like this, with bodies piling across Germany and Eastern Europe, all Speer cared about was the way he spoke? You can go to hell with your con code of conduct, Speer. I will not sit in the right step while, while what, Herr Schmidt? I have a quest to save Germany from, and I cannot tolerate this childish tantrums. Save it by gunning down students? Schmidt asked, anger radiating from his body. I cannot sit here and listen to you turn on who we are, promise freedom and democ- Do not dare say that word in this building, Schmidt. Speer screamed. Sit down and be quiet, you liberal-loving bastard of a man. All of Germany watched 
while the cameras rolling. Galen's bureau had been hoarding secrets, making hidden contacts, and sending information that was not to theirs to sell. How did this happen? Reinhard Galen was an intelligent man, one Wessel had looked up to. Now Galen had sunk to sending hitmen after him in broad daylight. He was sloppy, out of touch, and most of all, he could not be trusted. In the instance where the party rally grounds, the great theater in which the NSDP had performed their ecstatic rallies ever since Hitler's took power, in the center of the Iron Rebrun, the vast podium wreathed with swastika from which he had spoke and yelled and cried, which to many represented the golden days. It was burning. Time to refocus. That was the end of part 4a everybody. Part 4b will have probably been uploaded by the time you've reached this point so I would highly recommend you guys check it out. Also please don't forget to like and subscribe and also to check out some of my other Hoi4 videos as I really appreciate it. I'd also like to apologize for my tired voice and my increasingly frequent mistakes in reading. I recorded part 4a on a Friday night and it was and I was uh, pretty tired but I wanted to get this done as quickly as possible. But anyways I, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and have an awesome day everybody.